Uh, and the great thing is, everyone will be so excited. This is gonna be the best part about it. it What's up everybody? Welcome to Carving a Tiki Face. This is gonna be uh, more of a talking video. It's gonna be kind of a tool talk carving tip Tuesday. So, tiki faces, they're super fun. They're really a great way to learn how to carve. You kind of have to set your depths. You have to pick and choose the, uh, like how deep you go into the log, how deep you go out, how much is pushing out, how much is pushing in. And what's great about it is it can be done a lot with chainsaw. So if you're new to chainsaw carving and you know, you want to just kind of get to play around, this is a great way to do it. Now, one thing I want to say is planning. Planning to me when you're doing a tiki, uh, a tiki, you want to make sure that, I'm just going to turn this uh, off here so this, this fan is not in the background. There we go. The one thing you want to do when you're doing tikis is think about balance because if the balance is off it looks off and if, unless you intentionally do it that's the one thing I think if you're intentionally trying to change it like his eye is winking that will change the uh, the style of his face but a lot of times in the tikis that I've seen and the templates that I use and the ideas that I've seen uh, carve is they are always symmetrical and balanced. And that to me is something I think I always try to do in my planning. So in your planning, you know, make sure you get your center line. I did mine. And then I used a template. We did a template video. If you haven't watched it, go back, watch it. Then you can find your one, blah, blah, blah. I'm not telling you the projector. I hate it. That's the way it is. It's on Amazon. Um, and then I'll template it out and then I'm going to start to think about where my, let's say like my number one, two, three, four, five, the depths, how you're setting your depths. Like for me, I like to think, you know, the nose is probably one and then this is probably going to be three and that'll be five because that's the furthest back, right? This will be the deepest part cut in. Five is the deepest, one is the furthest out. You can, of course, if you wanted to add attachments, but we're not doing that. And this is just for more of a beginner's tiki. This is a more of an advanced face. What I Googled when I searched it was tiki templates, simple. Uh, well, tiki templates, and then there was actually an option for simple. So if this is your first tiki carving and you've never done a tiki carving before, Definitely, you know, take your time. Uh, look for one that's simple. Big nose, big mouth. Ah, the mouth goes in this black part here. That's going to be pushed in really deep. I'm going to paint it black. And then you can use lines. You know, you want to use crisp, crisp lines when you're doing tiki's. Of course, there's master tiki carvers. And, um, you know, I am not one of them. This is obviously a chainsaw carving uh, channel. And if you've stumbled upon it and you're a tiki carver, you know, sorry, but this is a chainsaw carving channel. <laughs> so if you want, go to the pro tiki carvers. If you're a hand carver and you really want to like, you know, do that because if you're going to hate on it, then well, hey, that's your choice. But I don't, I just do what I know from chainsaw carving and that's what most of you are here to do is chainsaw carve, learn how to chainsaw carve. And that's what I'm happy to teach. So when I'm doing this, I like to really set in my lines. Like I'll set this here and just kind of give you some examples. Even though this is supposed to be a tool talk, I uh, will, will do this. So what I really am enjoying is this new it's not out yet, I think it comes out in the fall. The 25, or the DCS 2500. The rear handle 2511, the same saw as, uh, you know, if you all know me, this is my, pretty much my favorite saw. This is this one, 2511. This is the battery version. Now, what I, I have, I've had this saw for 
probably a year. I've had this saw for a year and I've, I've used it, but I've never used it, used it. Like I've, I've always, uh, I rely on the power of the chainsaw. I always think that the power of the chainsaw is just much more, uh, there's more pickup, there's more, uh, it's faster, you know, that's the thing. Battery saws are amazing, but at the same time, you don't have that pickup. Now, I've been using this thing. I watched Brandon Kroon use this thing in Chetwin. I loaned out most of my tools to all the uh, overseas carvers uh, in Chetwin when I was judging up there. And Brandon was had said something that stuck in my head. It's It's a very clean cut. It's consistent. It's not pop, 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 pop. It's wow. You know what I mean? It's like here, there you, I'll just show you. You see what I'm saying? Consistency. Where the uh the saw is Oh, sorry guys. We're going for a ride. Yoo-hoo! Well maybe it needs gas. But you hear that wah, 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 wah. The saw is like pop, 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 pop. The piston's popping, right? So this saw is actually really, really, really starting to grow on me. I am not gonna lie. Um, it still, you know, it doesn't have the power like as a chainsaw pop does, but it's got the same kind of power of, a, of the, of the, uh, of the 2511. Uh, uh, and the great thing is, everyone will be so excited. This is going to be the best part about it. It comes with a quarter pitch sprocket. So you don't have to fight to get the 2511 sprocket that I get messages every single week about. I'm so sorry they're hard to find. Organ is the one you should shame because they stopped making quarter pitch sprockets. Um, you know, that's it. They, uh, I'm, I'm working on getting some made like custom ones made and then i'll sell them on sawvalley.com that is what i'm working on but yeah when you have these big companies that give up on their little sellers like oregon did for uh for for quarter pitch everything uh except for the chain you know it is what it is so call it out when you see it and that's what i'll do so with this 2511 it's very consistent i like it i'm gonna do a video on this mask soon as you see i got a new 3m you can talk through it cool there'll be a video coming out about this on tool talk tuesday and uh and this is it right so got the saw i just kind of think As you can tell, well, you can't really, maybe you didn't see it as good, but I already kind of messed it up because the template, uh, I just had a Jimmy rigged onto my table and uh, I need to get a new motorcycle stand. This thing's just shot, but it's fixed. You know, it's here, it's here. I'll do another one right underneath it. And, uh, and I step back and I'll look and I'll go make sure I got it. But that's kind of how I start it, right? You're just setting in the line, setting in the depth, and then recessing it back. So obviously my nose is going to be the furthest out. This is going to be in deeper. I'm going to push that in, but I'm just going to outline. And when you're outlining these uh, pieces, so check it out here. Like uh, when you're outlining the nose, you'll notice that my... Urge, 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 urge. Sorry, this is the problem when 
you don't have a filmer and you film everything yourself. You have to kind of figure it out. The lights are very hot. Um, I'm gonna have to fix them. So, on this side, I'm playing to this side of the uh, chain. And, but I'm staying true to the lines. You can see the black line there. I'm using my teeth. It's obviously cutting on this side, really. That's gonna be the dominant side for, for it cutting. So I'm kind of running it down here, flip, running it down here, and I'm just outlining. So like, even if it's an under, like this is gonna be overlapping. It's an eyebrow, right? Overlapping. So I'm gonna undercut, undercut, undercut. And then when I wanna overcut, I'm gonna go come out it this way. You know, you change the direction of your tip. And that's why I've said in videos, get to know the tip of your bar because when you're knowing the tip of your bar, it's your pencil, and then you can play it with it three-dimensionally. And that's what I really think is a great way for all carvers to learn and learn how to do it. And that's one thing that Tiki's will teach you is you're, you know, you're kind of, you're going on it with lines. See how I moved around there? I moved around there and kinda went up, under, up, under, and then I'm gonna set my depths, you know? Like, I'm gonna set the depths. I'm gonna, I, I know that the teeth don't need, I don't need to push in super far under the limb because that's where my teeth are, right? That can go as far back as you want. Uh, the darker it is, the better. I'll use paint, can be half an inch, can be three inches doesn't really matter, it's totally up to you. But that depends also on how deep you go here and how deep you go here and how deep you go here. So I'll probably keep them consistent. And then you just make sure you're consistent and there's cool patterns in tiki's. There's great ways to make textures with your saw, make textures with your die grinder, your Dremel, your finger sander, whatever tools you use. You can use chainsaw only for this stuff if you want. You just have to stay true to your finish. So it's like judging in Chetwin is one of my big things that I look at, or judging in general, is consistency of finish. Make sure you are consistent with the finishing that you do. If you use a Dremel here, use a Dremel here. If you do any tool, that creates a texture, make sure you consistently finish it where it needs to be in the other places. That's something for me that I find very important. If it's chainsaw only, chainsaw only. That's totally fine too. Just make sure it's good. But it, you know, like in competitions, if you did chainsaw only, it lacks the finesse that a power tool or a chisel can do. Not often do you see power or chisels at this day and age in comps, but you do see it in the eyes and sometimes fingernails and stuff like that. But that's still consistency of finish. If they're doing it for the eyes, they're doing it for the fingers, the wrinkles, the crinkles, that kind of stuff. That's something to think about. So when you're doing these faces, when you're finishing them up, set your depth, stay true to your lines, and then make sure you just kind of be consistent. Cut one side, then the next side. Cut this, then that. And as you go along, just try to make it as balanced as you can. And even like me, I messed up the first cut, changes the whole design in your first two seconds. It happens, but that's the beauty of chainsaw carving is you just adapt, right? So I'm just adapting here. I'm gonna run this down here, and then I know that this line, so what happened is, is it was probably off balance with the, the, the uh, 
the template. I can see that the line is here, but this one's down further. So maybe the, the angle of the, the projector was like that, where it made it wider here and thinner here, or thinner here and wider there. One of the two. It's too much talking right now for me to uh, do this. Oh, I gotta sneeze, excuse me. <laughs> Yahoo! Woo! So, <laughs> so that kind of brings me to the end. I mean, hopefully at the end of this, I'll have a finished product, but if not, there'll be another video on, uh, what'll it be? It'll be, a, there'll be another video on this carving in general. There's uh, flowers on the back and uh, it's, it's gonna be a bar top. So there's gonna be a video coming out on that with clips of, you know, how it's finished, where it's done. But if it's done in time, I will, also uh put this out so if you're here at the end thank you for watching i hope this video has helped you tiki's are a great way for beginners and it, and 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 uh advanced carvers to progress and keep pushing themselves there's no end to the level of detail you can do with tiki's and of course you know there it's it's there are masters at it i am not even close i just teaching you what i know so if you're here, thank you for watching. Give it a like. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comments. I'm doing my best to get to the comments. I know I'm terrible at responding to them, but there's so many of you that are responding nowadays. I thank you all so much, but I, uh, yeah, if you have any cool ideas or concepts too, fire them away. All right, guys, thanks for watching. My name's Ryan Cook, and hopefully this helps you uh, carve your next tiki carving a little bit better. All right, you. See you later. <laughs>